What's going on, people? This is Shok. No intro. Just going to get straight into it. But obviously, I want to talk about the Nintendo Spotlight event for E3 that just happened and give my overall impressions on it. Um, you guys know me. I'm very straight to the point. I know you guys are very interested on whether I thought it was bad, whether I thought it was good. I'm still working on like what which graded score I would give it. But if I were to give it a score with a certain wording, I would say this. Not bad. It wasn't bad. It was not a bad conference at all. Um, I know a lot of you who may disagree with that. You just thought it was utter crap, you know, whatnot. Um, I know some of you may be saying, well, you know, you're just saying that, Shokyo, because the pre all the previous years were so bad that this, this one just didn't seem as bad, right? This one seemed a lot better just because they didn't do all the retarded things that they've done in the past. And you know what? You're probably maybe correct. I'm not even going to argue with you there. But all I have all I can say is how I feel. And that's all I've ever done on this channel. I'm just giving the way I feel. And I felt that the conference was not bad. Therefore, I'm saying I don't think the conference was that bad. Um, to, give a, 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 to use a different word to describe this conference, if not bad is specific enough for you, it was, it was acceptable. It was acceptable. It didn't make me angry, right? You know, if, a Nintendo, if something Nintendo does doesn't make me angry, then it, it, it really wasn't that bad because you guys know how how much Nintendo has been angry at me this past five years, five, six years, whatever, right? Um, but but anyways, um, moving on. They started off with Xenoblade 2, right? And uh, you guys know, of course, um, I'm very excited for that game. Uh, the original Xenoblade was my favorite game last generation. I feel it's one of the greatest RPGs of all time, which is a very, very hard thing to, to say nowadays because, you know, most games in these genres that come out today aren't as good as the classics. But Xenoblade is one of those few exceptions where it's a newer, more recent game that you could put up there with the old classics that we had on, you know, the Super Nintendo and the older systems like that. You know what I mean? Um... But yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to that game. It's Monolith. It's a Xeno game. We know it's going to be amazing. Um, with that being said, though, I don't think that trailer was a very good trailer. I don't think it showed off the game well enough. Most of it was just the uh, you know CG cutscene and character interactions and things of that nature. It didn't really answer any questions. You see what I mean? Which is uh, something uh, you know the second RPG trailer, the second trailer you see of an RPG should should tend to do. You know what I mean? And they also didn't really show off the combat. They showed off the combat in one scene, and then that was kind of it. Uh, outside of that one scene, and it didn't really, didn't really show much um, in that one scene anyways. Maybe there's something I missed, but I, I'm pretty sure I was watching the whole time because of Xenoblade. You know, I love Monolith, I love Xeno. Um, but yeah, they really didn't show much of the gameplay. So I wanted to see, you know, maybe if I could... You know, I wanted to see some scenes where, you know, you could go back to the video, rewind it, and analyze it. And try to pick out some of the gameplay differences, you know, stuff like that. But maybe Game Explain could do that pretty well with um, the one scene of actual combat that they showed. Um, and then, in addition to that, I'm not a big fan of the art style. I don't think it looks ugly or anything like that. Um, that art style is fine. It's like the old school PS2, you know, RPG art styles. That's cool or whatever. I just wouldn't want that particular art style for the sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles. One of my favorite games of all time. You see what I'm saying? Um, I played Xenoblade so many times. I have it on the Wii. I have it, I even bought the 3DS version, and I've played it multiple times. I've done full playthroughs multiple times on Dolphin. That's how much I love that game. And I also played it on Dolphin in 1080p with the HD texture packs that the community made for it. And if anyone else has played Xenoblade on the Dolphin emulator with the HD texture packs, they could tell you that game would have been beautiful if they just kept that art style and just made it HD. That game would have looked so beautiful, but instead they went with this old school PS2 RPG, you know, art style, which again is fine. That, 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 I think that would have been completely okay if it was just some other game, brand new IP or something. But I just don't think that was the best fit for, um, you know, the successor, the true successor to one of the greatest, most epic RPGs of all time. You know what I mean? But I'm sure eventually I'll get over it. I'll adjust to it. It's whatever. Um, just as of right now, it's kind of a jarring thing to me, but I'll get used to it. And like I said, it's not deterring me from the game at all. Like, don't don't get me wrong. It's none of that here. I'm getting to day one. It's going to be an amazing game. It's going to be 10 out of 10, right? But I just wish they didn't go with that art style. Um, but moving on, um, 
and this may not be in order. I actually don't remember specifically in the order they show the games, but there's a new Kirby game shown, you know, cool. Um, you know, not really much to say about that. You know, Kirby's always just kind of a, you know, standard affair. Kirby's always been good. There's really not much to say about it. Um, and while a lot of people might write it off as, you know, one of those, as I, I like to call it, you know, uh, fuckboy showware games or something like that, you know. Kirby's, Kirby's always been a quality series. It's not for everyone, you know, whatnot, but, you know. Like I said, not much to say. It's Kirby. It's going to be a solid 2D side scroller. You know, what more can you say? Um, <clears throat> I know this wasn't in order, but Mario Odyssey, which is what they kind of ended the uh, spotlight on, looks really good. Um, I would kind of like how I kind of like the new atmosphere they're going for. The I would say that the city, the buildings look a little bland, you know, graphically speaking. Um, but the actual environments where you're in combat and stuff, and there's you know all the enemies, all the levels, look so good. That game's gonna be <laughs> that game's gonna be amazing. It's 3D Mario. We already know what's up, right? Galaxy, Mario 64. You know, um, 3D World, although underwhelming and just a port of 3D Land, you know, was still a great game. It just wasn't the 3D Mario it should have been. You know what I mean? But we all know that game's going to be dope. That that game's going to be pretty sick. Um, but, of course, I know you guys want me to talk about Prime 4. And if you guys want to see my reactions, it's, um, it's in the last video uploaded. It's about the 17-minute mark, I think. Oh, man. Now, now here here's the thing, folks. Okay, you... Like, again, you go see my reaction. You guys know I'm excited as, as hell for Prime 3. You guys know I've been one of the main people talking about, like, Nintendo Metroid. Where is it? Give us Metroid. Give give us Metroid right now. Give us night. It didn't have to be a Prime, but I am glad that it is Prime 4. Um, but, yeah, I've been one of, like, the main people clamoring, like, give us the, the Star Fox, the Metroid, the F-Zero, please. They finally gave us Metroid. Um, and I saw a lot of people in the chat and on Twitter talking about, oh, that's it, you know, Nintendo wins E3, baby. Let's let's chill for a second here, guys, because there's some inconsistency going on here now, right? Whenever Sony has announced the game, and it was a, a CG trailer, which, by the way, was more than what Nintendo showed for Prime 4, you guys always dock off a few points from the amount of maximum points that announcement could have, you know, garnered. Because nothing was shown. So, with that being said, I'm a little disappointed that there wasn't at least a CG trailer shown along with that. I know some of you might already might be going hammer and keyboards or choke you. You want to prime for and they officially announced it. They did. I'm happy. They get points for it. Don't get me wrong. They're just not getting as many points for it as they could have. I'm just being consistent. Some of you guys aren't. Right, because you bash Sony and Microsoft all the time and third-party developers all the time for you're right, right, announcing games without any gameplay. Nintendo did like the most, they did the skimpiest version of a game announcement ever. That was the generic four font, and then that was just, that was the generic plain just Metroid, you know, font. Like, I I could have put that teaser together. You see what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, no, not even a CG trailer, um, you know, giving any story details, you know, not showing Samus or anything like that. Uh, no gameplay. So, bummer. But still, overall, very excited that the game got announced, period. For those of you who may not be Nintendo fans or you really haven't been following the Metroid series, Metroid Prime 3 came out in 2007. In August 2007. So, literally, basically... 10 years ago, almost exactly 10 years ago is when we got the last Metroid game. The last Metroid Prime game, anyways. Um, yeah, that's a very, very long time. So after a decade, we're finally getting a sequel to Prime. We'll finally be able to figure out what happens to uh, Samus and Solix following her after the events of Prime 3 or whatever. So excited for it. And, but the most interesting thing about this is that um, Retro Studios isn't working on the game. Now, I'm not super bummed about that because a lot of people who worked on the original Prime Trilogy in the first place are no longer with Retro. Um, so there's that. And there's also, um, Tanabe is also still producing the game and he also produced the first three. So the director is still there. Just not the actual team, the people doing, you know, the actual coding and all that stuff. But 
Nintendo said this is a new, I think, I think the exact word was like new talent, talented dev team or something like that. So apparently Nintendo has assembled a team of most likely younger guys because, you know, Nintendo's been talking a lot about their younger developers or whatever. So it's probably a, a team of new younger guys that they put together with an, you know, a, a veteran leading the game. So I think that's a pretty cool combination and I'm, I'm sure those um, younger dudes could bring a lot of uh, new flair and ideas to the Prime series. So um, a lot of people are bummed that Retro's not working on it. I kind of see it as, you know, kind of a blessing. Not that I wouldn't want Retro to work on it. Don't get me wrong, I would have loved if Retro was working on this game because that would have, you know, guaranteed, like, I'm not going to have any complaints with this game, right? Um, you know, giving it to someone else leaves the door open for, like, oh, they took that out or I wish they did this instead, you know, something like that, right? But at the same time, think about it this way. This is how I think about it, right? So we got Prime 4. Retro's not working on Prime 4. So that means Retro's working on something else. So you see what I'm, you see what I'm saying? So that means we're getting two games here, right? Which otherwise could have just been one. It could have just been Retro making the, you know, making Prime 4. And it's one probably would never assemble that new dev team to, to, to make the game since Retro was working on it. See what I'm saying? So, um, John Kong, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze came out in February 2014. It's 2017, so Retro's been working on something for three years. So I'm kind of surprised and kind of bummed that we still didn't see Retro's project. Nintendo does not like showing Retro's games at E3 for some reason, but um, Prime 4 is announced, and it's not Retro. So that means, oh, in addition to Prime 4, we're still going to get an amazing game from Retro. Um, since it's not Metroid, obviously, I'm hoping for a new IP. I, I think I think Retro can have a lot of has a lot of potential with the new IP. I think they're very talented guys. They have really good ideas. Um, a new IP would definitely excite me the most. If not, like a Retro Kid Icarus would be cool, you know, something like that. If it's a pre-existing IP, or maybe maybe Retro's working on F Zero. You know, that's another possibility. I don't know. Maybe that's wishful thinking, but. I mean, hey, we got two Metroid games announced in the same hour today. Anything is possible at this point. That is unheard of. Like, a Metroid game getting announced, period, is unheard of. But two in one day? If those who don't, who don't know what I'm referring to, uh, Metroid Return of Samus was announced for the 3DS after the Spotlight. So if you just watched the Spotlight, then you missed that. But it's a remake of uh, Metroid um, Return of Samus or whatever. Um, and it's not like a remake, like, oh, they... They, it's like a, it's, it's not like a 2D sprite thing. They didn't just like, you know, up the sprites or anything like that. Like, it's complete from the ground up, you know, remake. It has new mechanics and it has like a, a melee counter system. It looks really good. Make sure you guys go look at gameplay of it. Um, that's a damn good looking game. I, I'm hard pressed to even call it a remake. It's, it's one of those remakes where like, it's only remake, it's only a remake in terms of, of story. It has the same story. It may have like the same areas and levels and stuff, but everything is completely, completely new, built from the ground up. That game looks great. Um, go take a look at it, definitely. Um, but yeah, um, looking forward to seeing what Retro is, is making, but unfortunate that still after all this time, after three years of them working on their... Actually, I remember Retro said when Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze released that they started working on their new game back in November of the previous year. So November 2013... They've been working on their game since November 2013, and we haven't seen it yet. That's a little odd. Um, but yeah, uh, mo moving on from that. They showed Mushroom Kingdom Battle, or Kingdom Battle, whatever it's called, right, with the whole Rabbids. Look, guys. Um, oh, for one, I really didn't want them to show this um, at the spotlight, because Ubisoft already announced it, right? And so I was like, okay, it's only 25 minutes. Hopefully, they don't waste any time, you know, showing this game. And they did it. And I was like, ah. But it was only one minute, so whatever. Um, my impressions on that game, guys, like, huge missed opportunity, right? Because the game actually looks good. It actually looks fun. And I'm talking about graphically and gameplay-wise. The only problem are the rabbits. Why would they choose the rabbits as the crossover for Mario? That is tainting video game legacy that is tainting greatness you don't put the face of gaming with rabbits oh that, that and that game pisses me off because i actually i like xcom i like strategy games like that right i love advanced wars and fire emblem you know xcom those types of games so i would have loved to just you know go ham on this game be excited for it by day one 
but I cannot stand the rabbits. They're literally the minions of video games. They're retarded. They're literally retarded. Min the, the rabbits are autistic. Like, <laughs> I don't understand why Nintendo thought it'd be a good idea to make a Mario and Rabbits crossover. It's the most random thing. And I'm seeing a lot of people saying the same thing I'm saying. Like, it, the game looks good. But it's a shame that they had to throw the rabbits into it. That just ruins it for a lot of us. I'm not going to be buying that game. Just because the rabbits alone. I, there's certain things I can't get over. <laughs> Rabbids is one of them, folks. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, they showed a new Yoshi game. Highly unnecessary. We just got a Yoshi game not too long ago on the Wii U that released in 20... Did it release last year? 2016? I think that released last year. If not last year, 2015. So it hasn't been like too long since the Yoshi game. Um, but I mean, it's, it's fine. It's cool, whatever. At least it's not a bad game. I, I wouldn't consider that, you know, one of... Until it's more like shovelware titles, you know, things like... Animal Crossing home designer and all that type of stuff, right? It's not on that level, but just kind of one of those, like, why, why is this being made? Did, did anyone ask for this? Did we need to? We just had a Yoshi game. You know what I mean? But it's, it's cool. Um, it's whatever. So, yeah, I covered Xenoblade, the Yoshi, the Kirby. Oh, yeah. New, they also announced a new mainline Pokemon game, which is huge. Not a super surprise to me, because before the Switch launch, Game Freak did say that they were going to develop a game for... Um, for the Switch. I just don't think, I don't remember them saying it was specifically going to be Pokemon, but there is going to be a mainline Pokemon game for the Switch. Guys, this is huge. I know a lot of you guys aren't, some of you may watch this video may not be Nintendo gamers, let alone you may not be interested in Pokemon. You think Pokemon's stupid, kitty, I outgrew that, yada yada, whatever, you know, all that stuff. But think about the impact <laughs> This is going to have for the system. I'm not a Pokemon guy myself. You guys know that I'm not huge on Pokemon. I had um, I had Red, I had Gold, and then I didn't play another Pokemon game until X and Y. I bought X. That's it, right? Um, and I and I enjoyed it, but I'm not like a Pokemon fan or anything like that, right? Um, but a mainline Pokemon game on console is something people have been asking for the dawn of time. And when a new Pokemon game launches, it is huge. It is a juggernaut of a release. And having a mainline Pokemon release on a console and on a console that is portable. So it's not even so there can't even be a situation where someone's like, oh well yeah, they have Pokemon on console anymore, but I can't take it on the go with me. So it kind of, you know, it kind of takes away half the experience of Pokemon, which is taking it around and, you know, with my friends and you know, battling wirelessly, you know, locally and whatever, and you know, all that type of stuff and trading, right? Like, no, like, this is on the Switch. It's on a hybrid system that you can take with you on the goal. So nothing of value is actually lost here by putting the the new mainline Pokemon game on the Switch. This game is going to make the Switches fly off the shelves. And one, one, one reoccurring thing, um, one thing I like to say over and over again, is for people to look at the bigger picture here. Again, I don't care if you don't care about Pokemon. But you have to understand and respect how big that announcement actually was. Pokemon makes the handheld sell like 20 million that year. Like alone. Pokemon sells insanely well. It is huge when it comes out. So Pokemon coming to the Switch. Mainline Pokemon. Not no Coliseum or Pokemon Snap. No spinoff. Mainline going to the Switch is going to guarantee millions upon millions of sales alone that solo game is going to sell millions and millions of switch units which can in turn hopefully maybe get some more third-party support on the system that is the big picture here so having a mainline pokemon game not only is that a great announcement just because hey we get a console pokemon finally imagine how awesome that's going to be imagine if they make it open world like That'd be kind of dope. You make your own trainer in your open world environment where you just go out and the po Pokemon are like free roaming or something. Like, that'd be crazy. But not only that, but that can also garner more games coming to the system. Because as the PS2 proved back in the day, if the install base is there, hey, the devs would be there. Like the DS proved. DS was a weakest crap system, but it sold so much. We had an Assassin's Creed game 
on the DS, right? Like the developers would be there. You guys see where I'm getting at. Even the Wii got a lot of exclusive third-party games just because of its install base alone. So um, if Nintendo's able to keep up this momentum until that Pokemon game is released, uh, we can expect to see, I'm not saying this is going to bring all the third-party developers, you know, coming to the system in droves, but it should increase the amount of third-party games um, the, Wii, the Switch gets, at least by a little bit, you know, but at least by a small margin. Um, so that's actually really huge news. Um, but they didn't, again, just like Metro Prime 4, they didn't show the game. They didn't even have a title for it. They didn't even do a teaser for it. So I think like, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, I think, uh, I think this game like just started development. So I think it might be a while till we actually see this game kind of seemed like Metroid kind of just started development too. Um, and maybe not, but like last week or last month type deal, but maybe like late last year it just started. So they literally have like nothing to show. They don't have an official title. Um, or anything like that. So that's so that's 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 the thing. That's the thing. Guys, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to you know downplay things. Like I said, I don't think the conference was bad. It was acceptable to me the overall. The two biggest announcements were definitely Prime Four and the mainline Pokemon game. The only problem is is that the two major announcements were not shown. They had no details, no substance to give along with the announcements of those things. They still get points for announcing those things. They still get major points, just not full points. Like. You know, showing Prime 4 with the CG trailer gameplay would have been 100 points, right? If showing the mainline Pokemon game ball announcement would have been 100 points. But since they didn't show anything, it's like, okay, uh, they get 70 points each. You know, that type of deal. So I'm not trying to say, like, oh, the announcements didn't matter because they didn't show anything, but they're definitely less impactful. So I saw a lot of people saying, oh, Nintendo won because they announced the new mainline Pokemon in Metroid. But you got to be consistent, guys. You guys criticize the other companies all the time for showing... CG trailers are not showing anything at all. So when Nintendo does it, we have to show some consistency here. They don't get full points for that. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all the main things. Um, as far as criticisms go, um, well, l l let me talk about what I, I, I like what they did. I already talked about the games they showed and with the ones I liked or whatever. I like how they didn't fool around with the Nintendo foolery, right? Because when I heard that the conference was only going to be 25 minutes, I was like, oh, God. Only like half of that, like 14 minutes of that is going to be, um, 14 minutes. Only 12 minutes of that is going to be like actual games because knowing Nintendo, they're going to have people talking for a long time and they're going to have, you know, the developers talk about their games, doing stupid antics. You guys know what I'm talking about. Like the whole Switch event in Japan, Splatoon 2, you know, it, you know, all that silly crap, right? I was fearful that Nintendo was going to do that, but they actually finally made sense. They were finally not stupid, and they're like, okay, we only have 25 minutes, so it's just gonna be games. It's just gonna be games. I know, I know, Reggie said that yesterday, um, but you know, if you guys have been following my channel, um, you know, this year or whatever, you will see why you can't really take what Reggie says, you know, for face value. You know, these days he's been caught lying on multiple occasions, but um, he was right. They they were really rapid fire. It was a pretty good pace, um, you know, in the presentation. So good on Nintendo for not fooling around, doing any you know stupid unnecessary things, and that's the thing. Like all those things they've done previous years, just so unnecessary, right? Just just time wasters. Like please stop with the antics. We just want to see the games, uh, you know, talk about the games, but we don't care about your developers being dressed up as the characters in their game and doing silly shit and all. You know, uh, I mean, all that stuff would be fine and appreciated if these things were like an hour long, an hour and a half long. But when it's twenty five minutes, no, cut that stuff out. When it's thirty minutes. Cut that stuff out. We don't have time for that. And and they did it. So kudos to them. They get some points for that. Um, now, so like I said, yeah, pacing was good and then that was good. Now moving on to what I didn't like about it. Um, don't like that, again, don't like that they showed Rabbids when Ubisoft already announced that. I think that was a waste of time. But I also don't like the fact that um, I just knew what I was about to say. And it just it just left my head that quickly. What, what, what else did I not like about that? But, oh, oh, yeah, 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 there you go. Um, nothing about the Switch itself. Don't get me wrong, you know, I, at the end of the day, gaming is always about the games or whatever. Um, but when you have a brand new system and it's the system's first E3, you know, show a little something about what you're doing with the system itself. And of course, of course, I already know people are already reaching for the keys, right? Of course, they're going to announce stuff later. That's always the case. That's always the case. But this is E3, right? You get the juicy stuff here. Right. 
Um, but nowhere in that showcase did they talk about the actual Switch, you know. And what I'm talking about is, you know, firmware updates. You know, what's coming to the Switch? What can, what can we expect? Um, when are the apps coming, right? Things of that nature. Hey, any new features on the way? You know, kind of tell us your plans to update it or, you know, things like that, right? Nothing, nothing mentioned the Switch at all. And again, it's not as bad as it normally would be because at least it was just game after game after game after game. Although most of those games we already knew about and whatnot. But, um... You know, it's mitigated a little bit, but yeah, just nothing about the Switch at all. And, you know, normally that wouldn't be such a huge problem, but the Switch is bare bones, right? You know, if it at least launched with the basic things, I wouldn't even be saying this part at all. I wouldn't care about them talking about the Switch or a firmware update. If the Switch allowed us to add people via username, if the Switch already had normal, regular, integrated voice chat, you know, all that good stuff. If it already had virtual console, that's another thing, no virtual console. If it already had those basic things, I wouldn't even care about this at all. But because some basic things are missing, I feel like they should have had it at this spot, like here at E3, put it back to 30 minutes, 35 minutes, however it was originally, take some time out to talk about the actual system and what you plan on doing with the actual firmware itself because system's still bare bones as hell. And we don't know when exactly it's going to get out of that state of bare bonesness. But that'll probably happen direct later this year, talking about apps and features and stuff like that. But kind of a bummer that we didn't get anything um, from this E3 about that stuff. Um, but yeah, um, I just think it's, I just, I just don't see how, if you're a Nintendo fan, you could say the Sony Microsoft conferences were like super bad, and then vice versa. If you're, you know, a Sony or Microsoft guy, and you can say like the Nintendo conference is bad, because I feel like, and I said this afterwards, I feel like they were all actually very similar and very close in terms of quality, in my opinion. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that, <clears throat> I'm not saying that they. Because obviously, you know, uh, Nintendo actually shows exclusives because that's all they have. They don't have multi plats And then Microsoft usually always shows multi plats And then, you know, Sony's so, usually somewhere in between, right? Um, so I'm not talking about in terms of... I'm not talking about in terms of games of like, you know... Of course, showing exclusives is more value than showing multi plats That's what I'm trying to say. But what I mean is by saying that they're all pretty much the same was nothing shown in all three conferences was super unexpected. Prime 4 and like the Shadow Classes remake may be like the slight exceptions to that, right? But even then, we did know Metroid was coming in some facet. It didn't get the huge news blow up it should have gotten, but last year, Reggie said, hey, ask me about Metroid next year. And actually, I don't know which video I said this in, but I mentioned this in a previous video. Probably won't be hard to find considering I don't do vids like that anymore. But I said in a previous video, like, yo, we might see Metroid this year because Reggie said, ask me about Metroid next year at E3. Turns out we got two Metroid games, right? So it wasn't super shocking. It wasn't as shocking as it could have been if he didn't say that. I was still surprised because, you know, after going through what Nintendo has done after all this time, it's just so... It's just so crazy to see them actually do something the fans wanted. You see what I'm saying? Like, although... Although Reggie hinted at it, it was still just super comforting Comforting just seeing the actual confirmation that they did it. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, n none of the big three really announced anything shocking with like one exception each company. Right? Just one exception each, each company. Other than that, nothing super shocking. So this E3 was definitely not the E3 of surprises at all. No surprises here. Um, but... What they all three of them had to show wasn't actually bad. All three companies showed good games. Only problem is, is that all these games were either multiplats or all these games were games that were previously announced. That's the only thing. So I don't think Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo, I didn't watch EA's or Ubisoft's, so I heard what they announced, whatever, but I haven't watched them, so I can't really give my, I can't really give an accurate verdict on them. But as far as the big three goes, I don't think any of them did poorly in terms of what was shown of course you can say microsoft did poorly because no exclusives yeah but in terms of the actual showing itself they showed good games they showed good content they showed good stuff right um sony focused a lot on vr that was a little bad but outside of that you know still what sony showed was was pretty good they had god of war you know they had spider-man shadow colossus remake you know cool you know good stuff nothing shown in all three of the the conferences were really like just like these 
bullshit ass titles. You know what I mean? Um, and even Nintendo, I'm shocked Nintendo didn't show like some shovelware crap. I'm surprised you didn't get any Animal Crossing home designer or some wireware mini game stuff or you know some bull crap like that because Nintendo's been all about that for the last five years and they've been wondering why they're struggling. I, I don't I don't get it. This is the the five thousandth party game we've released. Why aren't people buying the Wii U? That's what Nintendo's been doing this whole time, right? You know, giving us you know the Captain Toads and all you know all that stuff. It's like why why are you even making this game? Why does this game exist, right? Um, so I'm surprised Nintendo didn't do that. So they get points for actually for the most part showing us actual compelling games such as Xenoblade and you know Mario Odyssey you know Prime 4 talk about the Pokemon very briefly um, but like I said I can't get full points for the Metroid ex as excited as I am for you guys see me I'm excited just mentioning the, the, the game can't imagine what this game is going to look and play like but um points do get docked for not showing anything about it anything about it at all um so yeah not bad acceptable spotlight from Nintendo definitely much better than the last three three four years like Jesus Christ these last three years have been <laughs> it's been painful as a Nintendo fan but they did they did okay it was okay I think Sony's was okay I think Microsoft for Microsoft standards you know really nothing what they nothing they did was out of the uh, usual for them, right? Nothing was unusual for uh, out of what they did, right? So for Microsoft standards, okay conference. I think all three did okay. Um, I think most people saying that this year three sucked, had their expectations way too high. Um, don't forget, I called it before the generation even started. This is the worst generation ever. Everyone is starting to see that now. So naturally, E3s aren't going to be as hype as they used to be. I was right. I'm sorry. Um, but I think it was a, I think it was an okay E3 overall. No one did terrible outside of maybe you know EA or something. Like I said, I didn't watch any of the small developer conferences. But outside of the big three, none of them did terrible. But none of them did particularly great either. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'll see y'all later.